Hey everyone, I want to talk about why I believe all educators need a YouTube channel. Uh, in my classes I talk about this, my students are a bit apprehensive at first when I talk to colleagues and I do workshops in professional development, there's a lot of apprehension about why I should have or use YouTube in a meaningful capacity. Um, so for those of you that don't know, YouTube is the largest video sharing network on the planet. Uh, most of us are using YouTube on a day-to-day -day basis. Our kids uh, in and out of our classrooms are using YouTube on a day-to-day -day basis. And so I believe it's an important and valuable teaching tool. So if I go into YouTube, um, you know, obviously if I have a Google account, which many people already do, I can start up a Google a YouTube account right away because Google owns YouTube. Um, I prefer to have students that I have use their own personal Gmail account or Google account to sign up for a YouTube account as opposed to using a school account. Um, this is in higher ed, K-12 it's a little bit different, but the reason is I want to make sure that anything they do in YouTube uh, stays there. Uh, meaning any videos that they save, materials they upload, or anything like that. So let's get into it. Um, so for me, there are four real reasons why, or four real ways that we should be using YouTube. Um, first off, introducing yourself to other people. Um, I learned this a couple of years ago from Doug Belshaw, uh, basically stating that every single one of us should have a short video, meaning about 30 seconds max, uh, talking about who we are, what we're good at, and this is something that you can regularly update, almost like a blog. Uh, secondly, there's the opportunity to bookmark videos as you find them online. I'll talk about how to do that. Um, third, save and share playlists for your students to consume. And lastly, you could upload and share content for students just like I'm doing here. Um, so first off, if I go into YouTube, um, I'm signed in right now. You can see up in the top corner, I'm signed into my account. Um, I have all of my videos shared here. I have shared a lot of videos in the past on YouTube and I'm trying to be much more intentional recently uh, in my use of, you, of YouTube. Most of my videos are screencasts like you're seeing here where you're looking at my computer screen and I'm just talking over it. I'm going to start uh, showing my face on video which is a big thing for me uh, soon. And so if I look in, I can see all of my videos listed. Um, I can see all of the, the view counts. I can see the, uh, you know, how long ago I uploaded this content. And you can see I'm trying to uh, systematize the look of the channel and the feel of the channel. And that still is a work in progress. Um, so the first thing that I suggest is as you uh, go in and you create your channel, you can go in and, and customize what you see there, um, and I can see uh, you know, what it looks like to me. I can change to see what it looks like to a new visitor or returning subscriber. Um, but the first thing that I would suggest is as you go in, you want to think about what is the first piece of content that is going to come in. So if I say a new visitor, right now for me, this video that's having a hard time loading right now, uh, pops up and it's basically a video that I created uh, five years ago a six word memoir as part of the National Writing Project and a Mozilla uh, summer experience that I had but I'm going to change the video that's here uh, mainly because it's not popping up right now um, but I think that there's an important opportunity to have a, an initial video talking about um, a couple things one introduce yourself uh, second thing is uh, who are you who would you like to be so for uh, current classroom teachers, current instructors, current professors, you would basically introduce yourself, share your name, uh, talk about who you are. So I could say I'm an assistant professor of literacy education. I could say I'm a literacy educator and researcher. Um, or for my students that are like pre-service teachers, they feel a little bit apprehensive. They're still trying to figure out who they are. So you might say that I'm a lifelong learner or I hope to be a teacher someday. Um, so it could be something that you are right now or something a bit more aspirational. Um, lastly, if you have the time, and this is for people that don't mumble through and sort of get stuck after the first or se second sentence, talk about why. Why are you doing this? Why are you, you know, why do you want to be an educator? Um, why do you want to be whatever it is that you are in this world? And speak from the heart. 
So I think the first thing is a short video, about 30 seconds max. Who are you? What are you? Or, you know, this could be current or aspirational. And lastly, if you're not going to get stumbled, um, talk about why. For a lot of my classes on night one of my class, especially the technology classes, I put my kids in front of a video camera, high, you know, professional lights, professional mic, great high quality camera, and have them record this right off the bat. Yes, most people stumble. Yes, most people uh, get a bit apprehensive and nervous. But then by the end of the semester, they've thought about it and they can re-record this. So this is something that I would suggest do it two, three times. Um, and, and I think it works best and it's most authentic when it's just you speaking to the camera. The second reason why I think YouTube is a valid, valuable resource is as you search as you search online, you know, find things that you want to save at a later date. So I'm always, you can see I'm subscribed to a lot of different uh, channels. Um, I always find new things that I want to watch at a later date. So as I'm searching through, what I'll do is, you can see earlier I was searching for video podcast uh, cameras and stuff like that. So as you're searching online, you might say, okay, I want to learn more about, um, let's see, something. So I've been playing, I've been checking out this uh, phone, the new Galaxy phone that's out there. So MKBHD has a really nice video of it. And so what I can do is, if I don't have time to watch this, um, what I could either do is I could uh, like this and then YouTube will fold it into the algorithm and it'll save it for later. The other thing that I can do is I can hit save and I can save this for later. Um, so if I don't have time to watch it right now, I can save it at a later date and it'll fold it, it'll pop up in that watch later uh, space in YouTube. Um, as I look through here, I could save this to a specific class. So I might save it to like my language and literacy class or uh, an online MOOC that I'm developing. But basically there's a way to save a video for a later date. Um, it's keeping track of the firestorm of incredible content, and lousy content, but incredible content that comes through YouTube on a daily basis. So the second thing it would be, as you're watching content online, and, and my belief is that you should be watching content online, you should be watching YouTube videos, bookmark it, save it for a later date. Um, if you can't watch it right then and there, bookmark it um, in that little save later feature, which I love. The other thing that really helps me out a lot, and this is, a, at times it could be a little bit less helpful, is your watch history. Um, so you can watch something and then two days later, three days later, if you hypothetically put together a weekly newsletter about technology, you could pull up that video and go back to it very quickly. So first thing is a video introducing yourself. Second is bookmark and save videos that you want to uh, use for whatever purposes. Uh, and this could be personal, it could be professional, it could be academic. I use YouTube for pretty much anything. The third is saving and sharing playlists for students to use. So for a lot of my classes, I will have, um, if I go into my playlists, which are, where are they? So here's all of my playlists. So what I will frequently do is, if I have playlists about badges, so for a while I was researching badges, I was having my students watch videos about digital badges to add into my classes. And so I basically put together a playlist of badges. Um, and I could say to students, okay, go in, take a look at this playlist, watch it, tell me what you think. In addition, I have, uh, you know, if I put together a series of videos I want students to consume, I can quickly share that video out with others. So if I have this video on badges, I could say watch all these video these uh, videos about digital badges and then I can share this out. So I can click the little share button and there's Doug. Hey Doug, um, I can share this out and then what I can do is share the whole playlist and let students uh, take a look through it. Another cool thing that I've done in the past is, actually I'm doing it now, is for my slam poetry class, I've been collecting uh, musical performances or performances that are high quality powerful lyrics and it is a high quality powerful presentation or performance of those lyrics. 
So these are videos and performances online that my students in class are collecting and they're sharing and then also colleagues and friends of mine. And so what I did is I put together a playlist. This is a public playlist. Um, and I have students throughout the semester listen to the works that other people have collected and shared. Um, and then this is a YouTube playlist that I can share in class and then I can share outside of class. So once again, a playlist for me is a very powerful way to you can either save one video and share the one video or a couple videos with students or make a playlist and have you know a half dozen or more uh, videos that you want to share with individuals so that they can look across the videos and they can learn for themselves so a playlist is a very powerful tool most of the playlists that i use i uh, save and i create my own playlist and then i share it out um, one or two of them I share it out so other people can add videos, but most of them I basically make them public playlists and say, here are all of my resources on digital batches, or here are all of my resources on web literacy. Um, and I use those in my class and I use them outside of my class. I share them publicly online as part of my digital identity. The last thing that you could possibly do. Most times when I say to people, hey, you should have a YouTube channel, their initial thought is, I'm not a YouTuber, um, and you don't have to be. Uh, so for me, the last real thing is exactly what I'm doing here. It's uploading and sharing content for your users, for your students. Um, now, obviously, this is a uh, video. My Most of my content is geared to educators, um, but you don't have to be an educator. Most people online are would not consider themselves to be educators, but they're sharing content um, that with educational importance they are sharing to teach inform educate empower advocate um, and so there is the opportunity to use youtube as a tool to share your message um, and so if i go back into my video uh, my channel i can look at all of my videos so i can go up to my channel and i can look through all of my videos um, my video creation habit <laughs> Uh, basically started because I had a lot of students that either would come to class and they would miss a lecture or they would have questions about a lecture or they might be virtually attending um, or I might want to modify for students. So I might give a lecture in class, 20-25 minutes in class. The student was either not there, not paying attention, was paying attention and taking copious notes um, and missed something, um, or you know, a, a myriad of reasons. What I started thinking is I should just record this video lecture. Like there's nothing stopping me from, I have a PowerPoint class. Why not just do a video record of this? You know, record what's happening on my screen and then I can capture that and share it out. Um, in our higher ed classes, we call that lecture capture. We put those videos in some sort of repository in the institution. My thought is, well, I'll just put it on YouTube, put it on my YouTube channel, and I'll make it public. If people want to watch it, great. If zero people watch it, no sweat off my back. I don't really care. So I started putting initially, uh, initially just putting video lectures online. That advanced a little bit, um, and this was to support students in my class, and if other people use it elsewhere, fine. That advanced to, I would have the same questions that would occur uh, multiple times. And I've talked about this in the past with multimodal tutorials, uh, but I would have a, a, a series of questions for very small, simple things. Like, uh, you know, I would have students submit work through Google Docs, and I would have them share it, uh, but the sharing settings are off, so we couldn't view their content. So I would go back and say, um, you need to fix this. You need to fix your sharing settings. And instead of sending a paragraph or two of textual information or advancing a little bit and doing screen captures, I would put together a two-minute video, a quick video on, here's how you change the sharing settings in uh, a Google Doc or in YouTube. You know, I would share a video on, here's how you change the privacy settings in YouTube and a quick two minute, three minute video. So I started putting those two types of videos online on my YouTube channel. Now I'm starting to advance a little bit, a couple hundred videos in, um, and I'm starting to think a little bit more about 
okay first off when I go give a lecture in class I'll record that and share it but what about a keynote let's say I go do a workshop or professional development why not record and share that either before or after the fact so now I'm starting to do a lot more of that um, in addition I'm thinking about my blogs my blog posts when I share out a blog post why not do a two minute three minute quick video talk where I share the gist of what I'm talking about that can be a supplement for my longer video post um, and lastly and this is you know as of the last couple months lastly as I ramp up my use of video uh, and YouTube now I'm starting to think more about let me take time in my videos let me put the camera on put the camera on me as good as it's gonna be put the camera on me and just talk for two three minutes about a topic so let me talk a little bit more about technology use or privacy or security a lot of the things that if you bump into me in the hallways or bump into me in the classroom um, I will freely talk about questions concerns thoughts that I have I'm thinking more about sharing that online as opposed to burying it into uh, my blog posts or my newsletter or elsewhere and so it is only just recently that I'm thinking about turning the camera on myself so the fourth thing is basically upload and share content for your students and this is the last thing that you might think about um, so if you have the opportunity to if you want to share your voice you want to share narrative you want to inform empower advocate educate yeah there's the opportunity to share that content through video um, and so it's really easy now to record a video share it out online uh, most of us have high quality video cameras uh, in the phones in our pockets um, on our laptops uh, there's the opportunity to share that video content out online and and for me only after a couple hundred videos now I'm starting to think about okay well how do I want to use this tool maybe if I was smarter I would have figured that out years ago um, but for me it's taken this time to think about how I want to use this tool and only now am I starting to think about okay what happens when I turn the camera on myself what happens when I turn lights on um, purchasing all of that equipment um, what is the process what am I learning what am I failing at and all of that as always I will continue to document but now after a couple hundred videos now I'm thinking about that um, so I think there's a lot of reasons why educators at all levels individuals at all levels could and should have a YouTube channel first off uh, start off by basically starting up that channel and have a little video introducing yourself that video can be public and online or it could just be private and you look at it every once in a while when you need to feel good or bad about yourself or you could make that video unlisted and just embed it on a website, embed it on a social media profile. Um, so first off, just have a video introducing yourself. Get your, uh, your name and face out there. Uh, secondly, use it as a way to bookmark and save videos that you want to see at a later date. A very powerful way to keep track of things as you research and, and learn and view online. Thirdly, save and share playlists as a way to share content with your students or people that might be interested in what you're looking at and researching. And lastly, um, and this is where most people think that we should start, but basically at the end of this, maybe upload and share some content. Um, think about digitizing a lot of your content that you would normally use in your classroom or teach to others or talk about to other people. Uh, figure out ways to digitize to capture that and share it out online. So once again, um, hopefully you value this experience. Hopefully this made sense to you. If there's things that I should have gotten to a lot quicker in the video, please let me know. Uh, please uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, and give me some feedback and thumbs up in that video if you loved it. Uh, thanks. I really appreciate it. And have a great day.